Machine. Today we're doing 3-6 lines Machine. in the coordinate plane, okay? You know what a coordinate plane is. That's the graph thing. It's got the X and Y axis, and it's got like little boxes everywhere, and the line going through it is what we're doing. Okay, I'm going to show you two things. One, it'll help you solve a part of that, finding one of the points you need, and also it'll help you put that on a thing. Okay, guys, I'm going to do main sign. Okay, here we go. First thing you need to learn is called point slope form. Okay, point slope form. Y minus Y1 <laughs> equals M X minus X1. You won't use this a lot in geometry, okay? But you need to know it because you will use it occasionally. All right? So, essentially, <coughs> what you need to know is this Y1 and X1, those are our coordinate. Coordinate. That's our coordinate right there. The X goes there, the Y goes there. Okay? M is the slope. On this. Okay? So what you're doing is, your goal is to have the slope and the point. Okay? So if you have a point and the slope, you can put it in this form right here. Really don't know what else to tell you, okay? You just put in the numbers there and there for it. Okay? I don't want to explain it too much because really you won't use it that much past this section. Occasionally, but not often. Because what I do need to teach you is what you will use a lot. And that's slope-intercept form. Okay, we call the last one point-slope form because you need a point and you need the slope. That's all you need. Now we're doing slope-intercept. Therefore, you need the slope and you need the y-intercept. Okay, in our coordinate plane, that's our x, that's our y-axis. Slope is the rate of change. We talked about it last section. It's how high, fast or not fast it's falling. Okay, that's the steepness of our line. Okay. What the y-intercept is, it's like intercept, like interception, when you catch it, that's where you make contact with that ball, okay? That is called like intersection road, that's where they cross. Y-intercept is wherever that line goes through our y-axis, like right here, that point right there, which looks like about two, that is our y-intercept, okay? So what I'm going to teach you is the y, or slope, intercept formula, okay? Y equals mx plus b. Okay? y equals mx plus b. Alright? x and y stay x and y to be in this formula, but you can always plug in a coordinate that is on this line, because that's what this is. This is essentially, or that's what it is. It's the equation for a line. Okay? m is the slope, b is the y-intercept. Okay? So, m is the slope, M for man, that's the slope, and B for B Y E. Bye bye. That's awful. Um, okay, so let's work a couple problems. All right, they want you to write the equation in slope-intercept form whenever it goes through these two points. How about zero, four, and let's use the other one they did. Negative one, two. They want you to put this in slope-intercept form. Here are your steps. First step, I'll even write it out here. You can write it on your notes page. Find the slope, okay? To do that, you need the slope formula, which if you've forgotten it, it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, if you have the drawing, you can always just count rise over run if you want to skip this part, but we don't. So we do 4 minus 2, which is 2, over 0 minus negative 1, which turns into plus 1. So it's 2 over 1, which reduces to 2. So our slope is 2. I can bring down my y, I can bring down my 2, my x, and I need to find my b. All you need to solve this is the slope and the intercept, okay? That's all you need to solve this problem. Last step, okay, we've got the slope. Now we got to plug in to find b. We're plugging in the stuff we know to find B. This is what you do. We already know M. We've already plugged it in. To find B, we need to know we can't have any more variables. We've got to get rid of X and Y, so we need numbers there. Okay? X and Y represent any point on this line. Do we know any points on this line? Yes, we do. We know two points on this line. So you just pick one. Um, I'm going to pick 0, 4. Okay? Because I don't like dealing with negatives because I'm a positive guy. Alright? So... Let's plug them in. 
This is our x, this is our y, because x is first, y is second. So I'll plug in this, 0 for x and 4 for y. We solve it. 2 times 0 is 0. So 4 equals, and 0 plus b would just be b. So I found my slope, or my y-intercept. I found my b. All I do now is plug that in and then plug that slope back in. y equals 2x. It's a positive 4, so it's plus 4. You are done. You are D-U-N-E done. All right, let's say you have this and you want to graph it, okay? So let's graph this fool, okay? Okay, let's say we have, what's the equation? Y equals 3 over 2x plus 3. Y equals 3 over 2x plus 3. And we need to graph this on a graph. We've got an x-axis, y-axis. Always label those two. If you don't, then you don't get to ever go to the Disney World. Okay? Now, to plot this, you start with the y-intercept. We know this line crosses the y-axis at 3. So, I find 3. 1, 2, 3. Put a point there. That's my starting point. Okay? You always come from the origin and you go up or down, depending on if it's positive or negative. Now, <clears throat> the slope is 3 over 2. Okay, first of all, we notice it's a positive number, so therefore we know our line has to be going up. It's positive. Okay, 3 over 2, x. Alright, so it's rise over run. We know that from our previous learnings, rise over run. So we rise 3, because it's on top. 1, 2, 3, run 2. 1, 2, make a point. Rise 3, 1, 2, 3, run 2. Make a point. And I can also go the other way with it if I make them both negative. Because what would negative 3 divided by a negative 2 be? They would turn into a positive. So I can go the other way. I can go down 3, 1, 2, 3, back 2. It's still going to be the same line. And now I can connect those. And obviously it might not look pretty because I didn't have a real graph paper, but that's it. You're done. D-O-N-I-E, done. Okay? Done-E. Done-E. Ryan done. Okay? All right, next thing to learn. All right, this is important right here, okay? Because you'll see this a lot in your course exam. Parallel lines, parallel, intersect, intersecting, and coinciding, okay? Parallel. Parallel means they have the exact same slope. So like y equals... Uh, 1 half x plus 2 and y equals 1 half x minus 7. Alright? What's the slope of this first line? It's whatever is in front of x. It's not including x, it's what's in front of it. 1 half is the slope there. What's the slope here? 1 half. Guess what those two lines are? Parallel. Alright? Intersecting. That means that they do not have the same slope. So like 2 over 4 x plus 7. And y equals one, negative 1 over 3, x minus 3. As long as the slopes are different, these things are going to intersect. I don't care what. As long as they're different, it's going to intersect. Coinciding, y equals 3 fourths x plus 3, y equals 3 fourths x plus 3. Okay, now they have the same slope, so they're falling at the same thing. But if they cross at the same spot, that means that they are on the exact same line. Coincide means that it is going together, okay? So it's exact same. Make sense? I hope so. If not, you need to read, okay? All right, let's do one example on this that you'll see a lot. I want to deal with the parallel. Coinciding, if they're the exact same, they coincide. If they're different, they're intersecting, okay? Perpendicular we'll learn later, um, so we're just going to go with parallel. Alright, let's say I want to know if these two lines are parallel. y equals um, 1 half x plus 2. That's exactly what I had over there. Huh? Alright, and then let's do... I'm going to have to pause it. because Actually, you know, you can sit there and think about what you did. Alright, let's say the other equation is... That's our first one. Let's do the second one is... Um, now, 
negative 2x minus 4y equals 8. Okay? That's our other question. We want to see if these are parallel. Only thing that matters is slopes. Okay? Unless the whole problem is the exact same, then we know they coincide. But mainly it's the slopes. Slope there is 1 half. If this slope is 1 half, we're done. Okay? Negative 2x minus 4y equals 8. Okay? If you didn't hear that or you can't see that, just rewrite that. All right? Negative 2x minus 4y. What we got to do is we got to make it look like this form up here. I'm going to rewrite it bigger. All right? Negative 2x minus 4y equals 8. It has to have the same slope, so we have to put it in slope-intercept form. Okay? To do that, what's by itself up here? Y. Same thing has to be by itself down here. So, first thing you do, you get rid of what's farthest away, which is negative 2x. What's the opposite of negative 2x? Adding 2x. And I'm going to change this to positive 4y. Because I can do whatever I want. Alright? So, x that off. So, we've left with 4y equals. And since the x stuff is in the front, I'm just going to kind of push that in there. 2x, and that's a positive 8, so it's plus 8. What do I do to get rid of my 4? It's 4 times y, so do the opposite, which is, everybody together now? Divide. Multiply. Marks it out. y equals, and then you put that there and that there. 2 divided by 4 is the same as 1 divided by 2. 4 divided by 8 is 2. Now, are these two parallel? Yeah, they got the same slopes, but what do you notice? They're the exact same problem. Therefore, they coincide. They're not parallel. Okay? Didn't mean for it to happen that way, but sometimes life gives you lemons and you got to throw them in a car. Okay? So, that's that. Don't look at me. Just kidding. But seriously. Okay. Z end.